3D modeling has been around for a long time now, but have you ever thought about the other means of doing 3D modeling, like VR modeling for example? Well, it is a thing now, and it is used to a certain extent to do 3D work, but how does it compare to traditional 3D modeling that we all know using industry 3D software like Max, Maya, Blender, Cinema 4D, Houdini, and so on? And does VR 3D modeling have potential to be an alternative to traditional 3D modeling even if it is just a little bit? And in what areas it shines and where it lacks in comparison? And what 3D artists think about it these days? In computer graphics, VR modeling is the art form of creating 3D models with the help of virtual reality to either sculpt, model, design, or manipulate objects within a virtual environment. But is this all there is to it? Here's the deal. If you want to actually put this into practice, you would have to get yourself a VR headset, the bread and the butter of this technology, which comes in all sorts of shapes and colors, such as the Oculus Rift, MetaQuest, ACC Vive, or Valve Index along with a pair of VR controllers, like the Oculus Touch, Vive Wands, or Valve Knuckles. And then, to tie everything up, we have to pick the software like Gravity Sketch, Medium, or Tilt Brush to create the 3D model with it. While the origins of VR are still a bit of a mystery, the first successful head-mounted display system is accredited to Ivan Sutherland, an American computer scientist and internet pioneer. Together with his crew of scientists, which includes the likes of Bob Sproul, with plans of using it in an immersive simulation application called Sword of Damocles. And fast forward to these days, and with the release of Apple Vision Pro, we can say that the technology has evolved into an incredible force that has come a long way, and has become part of our daily lives. And me personally, I use it for a few hours per week. So it has become part of our daily lives, and 3D modeling is included. But the question is, how does it compare to traditional 3D modeling? You know, using 3D software such as Blender, Max, Maya, or Cinema 4D. At the heart of these two methods, we've got traditional modeling and sculpting, which I'm sure you've heard of a billion times before. So they are two approaches that need no introduction. Typically, it involves artists using a software like Blender, Maya, or ZBrush, with the combination of keyboard shortcuts, software menus, and a mouse, or maybe a tablet, if that's your thing. Now, in the case of VR modeling, it might seem a bit surprising, but it is practically the same thing, but in a virtual reality setting. And while it is different from one software to another, usually, we often find ourselves transported into a middle of a 3D space, where we can move around and hold different 3D objects in the scene with our hands, and then we can interact with them by using our motion controllers to view them from different angles and manipulate them like we do in our daily lives. From the first look, what is really striking to the eye is how the R modeling might seem like a technology that came out straight out of the 90s sci-fi cartoons, or maybe movies, while at the same time, easier to pick than traditional modeling. The motion controllers have fewer buttons than let's just say a keyboard, and the way it works is simpler by browsing through a series of small menus to find what you want to do, or by just moving things around in a 3D space. Whereas in traditional 3D modeling that we know, I mean, just look at the interface of Blender or ZBrush for example for the first time, and you might end up yelling in frustration. While it is beginner friendly from that perspective, the reality is contrasted with the higher entry cost. Look, there are many headsets under the sun that you can choose from, so it is hard to give a specific price. But I think for any decent VR headset, you would have to pay at least $300. But is using a VR headset or modeling in VR is actually worth it? Both of these two workflows have their set of advantages and weaknesses and it is up to each one of us to pick their poison. But when we look at it from an outsider's view, I feel like it is divided into two schools of thoughts. The first would argue that VR modeling is much more immersive. I mean, who could even disagree with that, right? We can scale the model directly in 3D space 
rotate it, look around, and all those fun stuff. We can also use natural gestures and movements to draw and sculpt on top of it. Instead of relying on a never-ending cycles of menus and shortcuts, even though a lot of people appreciate that. The design philosophy of VR modeling software can make the experience much more fun and engaging, and in a way, might help you visualize and communicate your ideas better, or even to get a better understanding of the scale and anatomy, which can lead to a faster turnover and more creative design. On the other hand, the second school of thought, which are those dedicated to traditional 3D modeling. And you're probably one of them. You might argue that this approach has a bigger pool of tools and techniques, such as curves, modifiers, a bigger set of sculpting brushes or nodes, shading, UV mapping, a superior control over topology, and just being a more flexible and versatile method in general that can be better to work with, especially on complex projects. I mean, think about having to model a convoluted sci-fi design. For that, it requires to stack a series of booleans on top of each other, among many other modifiers, and then you have to clean the topology at the end. And this sounds a bit like a nightmare if you think about doing it in VR. And while VR can be great for sculpting, you might struggle more in modeling, especially since you can work in a 3D space without any access to a 2D flat view, where we can move vertices with absolute precision. You see, VR modeling has nothing to prove to anyone from a technical perspective because it is already a great technology that you can at least have fun with. But it can also be used professionally, like it was used on Avatar 2, The Way of the Water, or the Echo TV show by Marvel. However, it still falls short, and it is nowhere near the popularity and efficiency of traditional 3D modeling. First of all, many industries often rely on legacy pipelines, and their workflows have been in place forever, which makes it difficult to justify the time, effort, and cost of transitioning to a technology that is not as efficient. Plus, I don't think the software that you can use within VR are ever gonna be close in quality to production-ready 3D software such as ZBrush, for example. And while opinions differ from one to another, it seems like a lot of artists in the community simply do not feel like VR is a professional 3D modeling solution, even though it can be. Just like how this 3D artist said, 3D modeling in VR doesn't seem very great, unless it is just for fun. A lot of use of tools and shortcuts is required in 3D modeling. Even if it becomes easier and there is access to the tools, it would still be easier to use a mouse and keyboard. Maybe it would be more useful for sculpting, but it is up for debate. But maybe there are potential reasons for that. So will VR modeling compare to 3D modeling, I mean the traditional 3D modeling, when it comes to efficiency, quality, and overall popularity? The simple answer is no. The way I see it is that VR 3D modeling is a different medium to do your 3D art and it can be fun. But if you do it right, it can be a productive thing that can help you work on your projects on the side or maybe create something to start with and then take for example to ZBrush or other modeling software to make it look better. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, let's give it a thumbs up. Also, if you have something to add, please leave it in the comment section below. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.